The secrets of success in school. What leads to success in school? Every three years, 15-year-old students in secondary school sit down to take the same exam in reading, mathematics, and science. The PISA program for international student assessment colleagues and studies the results from 64 to 70 countries. Countries that usually do the best on these tests are Finland, Korea, and Singapore because the global economy is becoming more competitive. Educators and governments worldwide are paying close attention to these tests to find how their countries compare and to learn how they can improve. What are these countries doing right? Should all countries follow their example? Is it possible to follow the example? Tracking One frequent question is about the tracking of students. When school tracks students, they place them in groups or classes according to their ability or need. This occurs in Singapore, for example. One of the most successful countries on the PISA test. Tracking is based on the belief that students are not born with identical ability because they are not exactly the same. The belief is that the best students will be bored and weak students will have difficulty in the same class with the same subjects. In Singapore, students in the special group go on to the university. Express students become critical, critical workers. Normal students become salespeople and road sweepers. However, in Finland, another of the most successful countries on the PISA test, educators do not separate students into different groups or schools. Instead, different types of learners study together. Students who do well and achieve success serve as good examples for other students who aren't doing so well. Clearly, tracking works well in some countries but not others. Hard work. How much effort is necessary for success in school? How hard do students need to work in Korea? Typical high school students get up very early, spend all day in school, and spend many hours after school in private institutes, or at night doing homework. Korean students need great discipline, self-control to give up sports, hobbies, and social life. Do they do this in order to be successful both in school? and on the important college entrance exams. Their goal is to get into the right university. A common belief among Korean students is that they can enter college if they get four hours of sleep each night, but not if they sleep five or more. Of course, one drawback or disadvantage is that Korean students experience exhaustion and a great deal of stress. From this, this example, it seems that students from countries with high PISA scores have to work very hard. On the other hand, in Finland, children do not start school until they are 7 years old. They don't have to worry about grades because teachers don't give grades until high school. In high school, teachers give grades but there are no lists with rankings of students from low to high. Perhaps most interesting students have very little homework and yet Finnish students still rank very high on the PISA exams. It appears that hard Competitive work is not the only road to success. Educators, is there nothing that the top ranking countries have in common? Is there no lessons we can learn from these countries? 
well actually that is the quality of teacher seems to be important to student success in Singapore Korea and Finland teachers have high status or social position for this reason the teaching profession attracts the best and the brightest in Korea people call them nation builders in Finland getting into a teacher training program is very competitive only 10% of Finnish college graduates are accepted into teacher training programs all teachers must have master's degrees which also gives them status this is in contrast to many countries such as the United States where teachers generally do not have high status the United States is not among the top PISA countries curriculum the PISA results also suggest the importance of curriculum in countries such as Finland and Korea there is a universal curriculum students of the same age study the same subjects in the entire country in the United States each state determines its own curriculum perhaps because the 50 states decide on their own curricula some US states rank very high on the PISA exams and some rank low the word curriculum refers not only to the courses that students take but also to all of the topics in each, each class in countries that do well on the PISA exam a typical 8th grade course focuses on 10 to 15 topics in the United States an 8th grade course typically includes 35 topics perhaps, perhaps this is too many conclusion on the one hand it seemed that education is not a one size fits all situation there isn't one perfect educational system that is right for all countries each educational system is a mirror that reflects the values of its own culture on the other hand it seems clear that each country can improve there is no magic solution but in this global economy no educational system is isolated from others and each can learn from others